Hi guys, welcome back to the Joyful Investor channel. Today we are going to talk about FIRE. No, 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 not that kind of FIRE. FIRE stands for Financial Independence and Retire Early. It is often defined by the principles of frugality, extreme savings and generating investment income. And the ultimate aim is to be able to use your passive income to cover living expenses and retire earlier. The underlying mindset behind the FIRE movement is delayed gratification because you have to work hard now, spend frugally now, save wisely and put some money into investments to compound over time so that you can enjoy next time by retiring earlier. Sounds a little tough for you? Don't worry, there are different variations of FIRE and you can find out which one is more suitable for you. Lean FIRE is where individuals are seeking to live off a more frugal and simpler lifestyle or what we call these days, a minimalistic lifestyle. The advantage is that since they spend less, they can afford to save more or invest more now to build their retirement nest. And since this retirement nest amount that they need to build will be smaller for a minimalist lifestyle, individuals adopting this approach will be able to retire earlier. Next, we also have Fat Fire. So if Lean Fire is telling uncle, uncle, well so roll, put your face, then fat fire is to enjoy that crispy, juicy shao roll. Under this fire variation, individuals prefer to live a more indulgent lifestyle and will have to build up a larger pool of retirement sum to continue leading that indulgent lifestyle. Next, coast fire. Coast fire entails front-loading your money into investments, then leaving it on autopilot to compound the money so that you can coast through retirement using your investments. Once you have built out a sufficient investment portfolio size for your retirement, you will still continue to work now to support your current living expenses. But it is not to save or to invest more for retirement. And we also have Barista Fire. Barista Fire is very similar to Coast Fire. But instead of relying only on your investment portfolio to pay for your retirement spending, you also take up a part-time job during retirement to cover part of the expenses that is required. Hence, this is a lighter version compared to Coast Fire and you don't need to build an investment portfolio as big as what a regular fire would need. Before we go on, let me share a quick message from the sponsor of this video, Usmart. Usmart is currently running a promotion this month and next month where you can receive monthly cash and stock vouchers worth up to USD $400 when you open a Usmart account. Deposit and trade. From now till 31st December 2002, you also get to enjoy unlimited zero commission fee for US, Hong Kong and Singapore stocks. And there is no minimum charge for Singapore stocks. Terms and conditions apply. Usmart is also one of the few brokerages which offers fractional shares trading and featured strategies curated by Usmart market strategies and analysts for investors. If you are keen, you can look for my referral link in the description box below. And let's proceed on with the video. As you're finding the best fire type that suits your lifestyle, please do not think that you must select and choose to be in only one of the four fire types. These fire variations are just broad categories for people to define the different ways to fire. In fact, there are more than just these four variations of fire. But when it comes to actual execution, you can always do a hybrid of more than one fire type or modify the fire types according to your own personal preference. Like for myself, I personally don't like the idea of sacrificing my current living standards and live overly frugally below my means just so that I can save more now. The conventional fire movement often carries the notion of living below your means so that you have more money to save or to invest. But I'm a believer of striking a balance on spending and saving wisely without compromising my basic standard of living. At times, I might indulge in perhaps a more fanciful meal or to reward myself with purchases along the way to celebrate small successes in life. Those, in my opinion, are actually somewhat important to motivate me to continue to work harder towards the goals that I want to achieve in life. After all, life is finite. Touch wood. And I don't want to regret that I didn't enjoy at all and that I was just simply chowing all the way to fire. So now the question is, how do you fire? To fire, you must first understand that there are three main pillars of fire and they are to be able to increase your savings, to boost your income and to invest consistently. 
First pillar, increase savings. Personally, I think being able to save wisely is the most basic pillar of the three pillars. You may be earning a high income, but if you do not know how to save sufficiently, you would still be stagnant in your fire journey. Similarly, if you can't save wisely, you wouldn't have the funds to pump it into your investment portfolio. So what is a good amount of savings per month? It really depends on how much you are earning and spending. What I personally like to do is to first determine what is an appropriate amount to spend per month such that I can cover my basic living expenses which includes transport costs, food, bills, insurance premiums and so on. And like I have mentioned previously, I will also allow myself to spend a little on discretionary expenses or social activities to reward myself along the way. Then, not to forget, I will also add on the allowance that I give to my parents every month. For the remainder of my monthly salary, I will then save them. I do know that there are some individuals who attempt to set a target percentage to save, say at least 50% of their salary. Whatever percentage in our opinion should be adjusted based on your personal circumstances because it really depends on how much your monthly salary is. If you're earning say 2.5k a month, then 50% is $1,250, which might not be sufficient for some people to spend in a month. Hence, we should always work towards a personal target savings amount that is achievable for ourselves and at the same time, we do not sacrifice our basic, uh, our basic well-being. As your income progresses, you may then adjust accordingly to buffer for more investments. The second pillar is to boost your income. There are certainly many ways to boost your income. For example, you could start a business, you could take out a part-time freelancing job or to monetize your passion. Alternatively, you can also work on beefing up your knowledge and expertise in the field that you're currently working in to create more opportunities for promotion or even secondment or transfer to another department. Quoting what Warren Buffett says, investing in yourself is the best thing that you can do. Anything that improves your own talents. The last pillar to fire is to invest consistently. This is like the turbo charge in Kart Rider where you get that boost in speed. While we may be able to take up some part-time freelancing work to earn extra income, we are ultimately limited by how much time we have in a day to work. So if we could find a way to make money while we sleep, then that can further accelerate our fire journey, isn't it? But investing doesn't make you rich instantly. Time is needed for the compounding effect to work. And that is why we should start investing early and consistently so that our capital can snowball over the years. So now let me share with you when it comes to the investment portion, what am I doing to fire? There are many ways in which you can invest your money in the financial markets or some do it through the property markets. I personally prefer to invest my money using three main instruments, the US and China stocks, options and Singapore REITs. The strategy is this, I invest in the US and China stocks and options to accelerate the growth of capital and some of this money accumulated would then be pumped into Singapore REITs at the same time. The rationale being that I have limited capital to begin with and I would like to compile my money at a higher rate of return in the initial phase of my fire journey so that the capital can snowball. Now comparing US stocks and options versus Singapore REITs, the former generally tend to yield a higher return on investment based on the historical performances over the last 20 to 30 years. That is because Singapore REITs Usually, they distribute at least 90% of their taxable income as dividends. So they don't leave as much of their earnings for growth purposes. Whereas the US growth stocks usually retain most or all of their earnings for growth development plans. So as these growth companies continue to grow their earnings at a double digit rate, share prices also increase. And that is why we can enjoy a higher ROI from the capital appreciation. Then subsequently, as the capital accumulates and as I grow older towards retirement, more money would then be ploughed into the Singapore REITs. And by then, I will slowly increase my allocation to allocate a higher proportion of my capital into the Singapore REITs compared to the US stocks and options. That is because the top priority by then would be more about capital preservation and ensuring that I can withdraw a sufficient amount for daily expenses and not so much about growing the capital faster. Singapore REITs, though the dividends are not guaranteed, 
the good ones generally still are able to maintain a consistent distribution, which gives a regular stream of cash flow. Basically for stocks, whether is it US stocks, China stocks or Singapore REITs, this is the regular routine that I go through. The first step is always to analyze the businesses to find quality ones to invest in. There are more than 7,000 companies listed in the US stock markets, but only 30% of them are profitable. And if you look at just the S&P 500 companies, only about 20%, which is approximately 100 companies, have a double-digit revenue growth and earnings growth in the last five years. If you apply more extensive criteria to further narrow down to the strongest companies, you will be left with just less than 10% of the S&P 500 companies which are worthwhile to invest in. The selected companies are then curated into a stock watch list that I set up on the brokerage platform. The next step in my usual routine is to go through the stock watch list and then identify if there are any opportunities to buy at high probability entry points. High probability entry points are price levels where the odds for upside returns is generally greater than the downside risk. They are the levels which, when prices retrace to, they tend to rebound back up. So we score a good deal by buying at a lower price and eventually enjoy the capital gain when prices rebound up. Okay, okay, I know it sounds a little cheap. Let me use an analogy to explain. Suppose you are a big fan of high Lao. But you know that high Lao has a tendency to give promotions such as 20% from time to time. Would you be better off eating at high Lao with 20% discount or without the discount? Of course, with discounts, you will be able to spend less for the same amount of food that you ordered. So since you know that high Lao has a tendency to give as much as 20% discount, you may want to wait until the next time when high Lao gives the discount before you dine in at high Lao again. And in the meantime, you can look for other restaurants that offer better pricing. For example, Beauty in the Pot, which had a promotion for ladies, or even looking at other types of cuisines. For example, Thai food, Japanese, Korean, Western, and so on, that are currently offering good deals at the moment. So bring this logic back to the stock markets, I want to be buying stocks that are on a good price setup at the moment, allowing me to buy at bargain prices. And I do this by analyzing the stock price movements for the trend, momentum, as well as looking at the candlestick patterns, some of which I shared before in my live Zoom webinars. The same goes for finding exit points. At times, I may want to offload some of my positions in certain stock counters when I identify a good exit price level at which the prices are hitting a strong resistance. This brings me to the third step, which is that this money that I get from offloading some stock positions will then be rotated into another stock on my watch list that is offering a good buying opportunity. Why I rotate my funds around is because of the concept of sector rotation, where various sectors perform differently at different parts of the market cycle. Furthermore, there are times where even quality businesses may face temporary headwinds, which depresses their stock prices. For example, Adobe stock prices recently plunged by over 16% on the acquisition of Figma. This then creates opportunities for me to buy into the great businesses. So through this routine, I then build up an investment portfolio and compound the returns over time for my fire journey. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for our next video on the fire movement. Do also subscribe to our Telegram channel to stay updated with our latest investing insights.